Hello everyone, I'm Naurid and welcome to I Am Social, the audio experience. Today we will have chat with a very special guest and we will discuss about LinkedIn, specifically how she is helping her clients to leverage LinkedIn and LinkedIn marketing to grow their business. So guys, let me introduce Katrina Card, the special guest we have today from Denmark. She is a marketeer public speaker, she is a content creator and the co-founder of the company named LinkedIn. So hello Katrina, thanks for being part of I'm Social, the audio experience. How are you doing today? Hello and thank you for introducing me. Uh, it's lovely to be on your show. Uh, I'm doing really well today. It's a really wonderful day in, here in Denmark and I'm super excited okay. to talk with you about LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm so glad and, and I'm really looking forward to know more about um, and know the exciting stuff from you because I see you're doing a lot of work. But I think before we start that discussion, it would be great if you just introduce yourself to our audience because I know a lot about you. But uh, I think especially the audience from Malaysia would like to would love to know more about you. So would you please tell who you are, uh, what you're doing and some, some exciting stuff. Sure thing. Um, so my name is Katrina, like you just heard. And uh, I'm a Lithuanian living in Denmark. I have been working okay. with LinkedIn for the last four, four and a half years, meaning that I was active okay. on the platform. Uh, some years ago, I started creating content already. And uh, I okay. think for the last uh, two years, I've been doing it as work, meaning earning money, consulting companies and clients. And uh, okay. as you know, maybe for the last uh, more than a half a year, we have been working with Linkedin, where we, uh, my co-founder and I, we co-founded it uh, last summer, and it's been a roller coaster journey right from the beginning. So this is okay. a little bit of what I do, and then besides that, I'm also doing some public speaking uh, workshops uh, and so forth around marketing, social media, and LinkedIn. Okay, so it's been only a few years you start exploring about LinkedIn, right? Yeah, uh, I think I had an account mo uh, maybe six years ago I, when I first made okay. an account. But uh, I was okay. really like active and serious about it maybe four years ago, started to become, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm also becoming serious about LinkedIn, I think three years back. Right. Yeah, I find yeah. it's very magical. Yeah. So I, I, I find the name LinkedIn is very interesting. Yes. And uh, honestly, when I first saw the name LinkedIn, I thought, wow, as I'm a LinkedIn fan, I can actually introduce myself as a LinkedIn. So my first question to you, how this name came to your mind? And when I see the name LinkedIn, it gives me a vibe that you're more into like LinkedIn marketing. Yes. Uh, so are you guys doing LinkedIn marketing or you have the other social media platforms? So it will be great if you share just something about LinkedIn. Yes. So the name really came to us. It wasn't like um, a story which most entrepreneurs have when they have some kind of a wonderful story around the name. I think we were very strategic mm -hmm. and I have started a business before, uh, maybe okay. four years ago. Uh, and it didn't work, okay. but back then I spent so much time on the name and, you know, now that was one thing that I learned that maybe in the beginning the name does not mean that much if you can start doing something and working on something. Um, so we were really right. fast about it rather than spending many hours and we used a simple tool mm. online to uh, where you can basically put in a lot of different words and it kind of gives you a mixture of, <laughs> yeah. of different names, right? So that's, that's our story about right. the name. We found one that we liked okay. and, and we kind of picked it. Whereas uh, when okay. we talk about the company by itself, I think it is okay to say that we are only doing LinkedIn because we wanted to be a niche company right from the beginning, right? We have a lot of these marketing agencies mm. and they do everything. And that's okay. That's yes. their offering. Um, but we wanted to be okay. a bit uh, different and we wanted to stick to what we know the best, which is LinkedIn. Mm. And that's why LinkedIn mm. is... That's why it still gives you away right away the feeling that we're working with LinkedIn. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys have made it successfully. You guys are doing it very successfully because as I told you, like when I see the name LinkedIn, I got the idea. Yes, they are very much focused on like LinkedIn marketing. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> but 
let me tell you something that uh, especially um, I saw that when we are discussing about LinkedIn, people still tend to consider it as an employment website where individual looks for jobs and companies mm -hmm. are looking for employees. Uh, not more than that, but it's becoming something different nowadays. It's becoming more like a marketing platform, but most of the people don't believe that it can be utilized as a marketing platform. So, I mean, how has your experience been on this platform? And, and I mean, when you face this challenge, when you go to the client, I think client also give you the same vibe. Oh, it's a platform for recruitment. So why mm -hmm. and how are you going to do the marketing in here? So how you overcome this challenge and what was your communication? I think that a lot of the clients who are reaching out to us, um, they do already have an understanding that it's more, much more than just a recruitment platform, that it is, uh, you know, a place where people create content, where uh, you can learn a lot of new things and where you can actually sell you, about your company right. or like sell your products or your services. So I think okay. right from the beginning, uh, we don't have to prove that it's a recruitment platform because a lot of the people, uh, at least in Europe, and I don't know, maybe you have to yeah. tell me how it is in Asia, in Malaysia. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. But um, in Europe, at least a lot of the companies who are serious about this, they understand that it, it can bring uh, mm. business. Okay. So it wasn't really challenging as I'm gazing, right? Um, no, it wasn't the challenge that we needed to prove uh, that uh, this can actually uh, be much more than just a recruitment platform. That's, that's really not the challenge. I think the challenge is to prove where uh, the money that you invest in brand awareness, where does it go? Mm. And to prove really right. like you never know if someone who have seen the ad and if they clicked on it or okay. if they just went on the website directly or... Uh, if if your new client is someone who saw your LinkedIn post, you never know unless you ask them. Yeah. So. Right. Right. Yeah. But honestly, I think it's it's a bit difficult in Asia, especially this Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand part, um, because still people are thinking, and most of the companies are thinking that uh, LinkedIn is probably the platform only if you'd like to hire someone or if you're looking for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the thing starts changing. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, a lot of people start creating content, uh, including me. So we start trying to, uh, I mean, communicate a message that LinkedIn is like a content platform um, rather than a platform to get a job. So exactly. I think it starts changing. Exactly. Yeah. It is changing. It starts and, changing. And, uh, you know, like four, three years ago, there were top 10 content creators on the platform. And that was it. You knew yep. all the top people. You knew Mikel Alexis, you know, like all the other ones. And True. now it's a lot of new people. It's like everyone everywhere. And it became like so much more than just uh, a few curators and recruiters. And I think uh, when you're talking about some big names, like say for I just take a name, say for Simon Sinek. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to get connected with Simon Sinek, probably it's possible in LinkedIn. It's not never, ever possible in any other social media platform. Am I right? Yeah, there are some, uh, definitely some well-known people who you can reach via LinkedIn who don't really hang out on Facebook or Facebook is private and Instagram is not a thing as well. So definitely to create those professional connections, you can uh, reach out to some of the people on, on LinkedIn and actually get their response. For sure. Right. So now I'm coming uh, to a bit more uh, your personal experience that uh, a lot of people actually ask me because uh, in last one year, wherever I had my session, I talk most of the times about LinkedIn. So they asked me the same question I want to ask you. What interests you most about LinkedIn? I mean, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. They are more sexier than LinkedIn. LinkedIn mm -hmm. really not looking mm -hmm. so attractive. Mm -hmm. So how and when did you realize that LinkedIn can do the magic? Well, in the magic in regards to the companies or what do you have in mind? Like, okay. could you specify which magic we're talking about? Uh, I think uh, the magic I'm talking about, like when I start doing the personal branding mm -hmm. in LinkedIn, I see it's way more effective okay. than any other social media platform. The organic reach is good. And even when I'm, 
doing the business ads in LinkedIn, I find the quality of the leads are really better than any other mm. social media platform. But I think I really re- realize it early than the others. Yeah. So what about you? Yeah, I think uh, when I started those a uh, few years ago and when I saw that people are engaging and back then there was not so much engagement, but I could still see that, you know, people enjoy uh, reading uh, genuine posts and uh, okay. reading about your opinion and so forth. Then I thought, well, this could be something. And then I think I just kept on doing it and I could see that, okay, it's working and people are engaging and discussing and so forth. So it really was a point where I could see that on LinkedIn, um, differently than on other platforms, you can actually right. become viral or have a viral post very fast if if you write something right. of a good quality. Like on Instagram, you exactly. can make the most uh, quality post, uh, but if you don't have followers, no one's going to like see it. Yeah. It's not going to explode. Whereas on LinkedIn, uh, you ju- you can just a few of the get a few of the right people to like it and comment on it, and yeah. then your post can like become viral. So that, I think that's what I really like about the platform that it it doesn't limit you. It gives you a lot of opportunity if you create really good content. True. True. I think the, the same thing happened with me. Like back in three years, mm-hmm. in, uh, in two thousand and seventeen, I start my I start creating my own content. And then suddenly I got a comment from a CEO of a company, I forget it, but that makes me really pumped up. And I was so excited. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> even he is not connected with me. He dropped a uh, feedback in my content and that gives me the motivation to create content regularly. So when we are talking about content creation, I know you are a content creator as well. And I see your contents are uh, doing, I mean, amazing. Like it's reaching 8,000, 10,000. Uh, people so uh, how what are the things three key things you're focusing when you're creating the content to make it more engaging so I'm always focusing on some kind of value Um, it has to be there it just simply has to be there because if post is not giving any value um, it's why would other people spend their time on it so value then there has to be story some kind of storytelling elements because uh, it's okay. much more interesting to read a post when you can follow a specific story. So I'm always trying to, not in all of the posts, but at least in 80% of my yeah. posts, I'm trying to some kind of like have a question, uh, get people excited, curious, and then kind of tell everything in a storytelling way. Um, and then right. I think it would be maybe the right hashtags. Because at the end of yeah. the day, you want to get exposed to new people as well. So I always try okay. to pick new hashtags, two, three hashtags, which I include. So I guess it would be value, storytelling, and hashtags. Okay, so as you're mentioning about hashtag, I see, yes, hashtag works really well. But if for audience, uh, I mean, what would be your advice? How they should uh, realize they should choose this hashtag or that hashtag? I mean, how they will find this is the relevant hashtag? Is there any way? or they should choose anything which is relevant with their content? Uh, I think uh, definitely people should choose the hashtags that are somehow connected to the post they're making because if you make a post and you use a hashtag that doesn't fit at all, um, you're risking that it's going to be exposed to an audience. Let's say you say hashtag finance and your post is all about marketing then your post is going to be exposed to finance audience and they are not going to engage. So I think the best is to still keep it to the hashtags that actually make sense and that uh, belongs to the topic of your post. And then uh, take it from there. You can always uh, go on search and put in the hashtag and see how many followers it has. And so try to see which ones have more and then use those in your post. Wow, that's an amazing tip. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I will also try it in my post as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So, uh, yeah, there's one more thing I really want to ask you that a lot of people say LinkedIn is one of the best platform for B2B marketing. Mm-hmm. But I'm 95% sure most of the audience don't know that uh, why LinkedIn is a good platform for B2B marketing. 
Uh, so can you explain it in layman's terms, like why we say like LinkedIn is a platform for B2B, best platform for B2B marketing? Yeah, so I totally agree with this term because at the end of the day, LinkedIn is the biggest B2B uh, and more like professional people network, right? And people mostly right. work at bi- some kind of businesses. And therefore, right. uh, when you are connecting on LinkedIn, when you're creating content, when you're talking with people, you're talking with people from other businesses. And uh, when we are writing about something, when we're creating content about our own company and services, other people see it from other companies and they maybe interact with it and they reach out and want to buy your service. So there are a lot of ways sure. how you can basically sell your service or product through LinkedIn via either content creation or via messaging, cold outreach or advertising. Mm. And therefore it is the best okay. platform because if you look at other platforms like Instagram, Facebook, right. Twitter, it's not really professional network. It can be anyone. It can be anyone right. with any kind of name. You will not know from which company they are and so forth. Like on Facebook, you can have yeah. a completely fake name. No one's going to know. Yeah. Um, whereas and on... people do, so... do like CEO of my own house, something like that. Exactly. And yeah. that's different on LinkedIn, right? Uh, I feel like on LinkedIn, yeah. everyone is professional. They have their names, they have their companies, they have their titles. And you know how True. to do business. So True. I think that's why yeah, it's even, the best for B2B. Yeah, yeah true. Even like uh, as I was uh, before the show starts, I was talking with you about a conference. So what happened? We are looking to uh, have a partnership with a company. And we were really not uh, know anyone from that company. So what we did, we go to LinkedIn and try to find people who are working in that company and then trying to connect with them and uh, I mean, sending them email about the partnership and, mm-hmm. and it's really going well. So I think without LinkedIn, we cannot make it happen. So mm-hmm. yeah, true. Exactly, true. yeah. So as you guys, I mean, you and uh, your company, like LinkedIn are uh, doing a lot of LinkedIn marketing and definitely I'm pretty sure over there, you're doing a lot of LinkedIn ads as well. So let's talk mm-hmm. about LinkedIn ads a little bit. So what I feel like LinkedIn ads offer a lot of quality. It's, I mean, it's not something like Facebook lead ad or not something like Instagram lead ad, but I see the price is actually 10 to 15 times more higher if I compare mm-hmm. with the other social media platform. If one lead cost me in Facebook, uh, say for $5, it cost me in LinkedIn around like 30 to $50, so which is like crazy expensive. So how would you explain... Um, how would you explain this? Like why people should go and spend, I mean, more money and uh, use LinkedIn for the lead generation because LinkedIn is also one of the best platform for lead generation as well, right? Yes, it is. Um, so when people usually, and sometimes even our clients ask us about, you know, the comparison of the price and the the comparison of the... Uh, the whole budget that it is way higher on LinkedIn and so forth. One thing I like to tell people is that um, it's really about the quality instead of quantity. I feel like on other platforms, you can get a lot of quantity, meaning a lot of uh, potential impressions and so forth. But on LinkedIn, you can really get the quality, meaning you can get uh, the attention of, let's say, all the CEOs of specific companies or all the top management or all the seniors. So you really know that these people who are in charge, who are decision makers, they are going to see your content. And I think that's that kind of settles the whole discussion (laughs) for me most of the time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm very um, I'm very impressed with the LinkedIn ads so far. But uh, sometimes it's really hard to explain the management that why we are willing to pay like ten times uh, I mean price to get the lead. But I think yeah, this is one of the logic we can really consider. So one more thing that when we are using LinkedIn as an individual, so how important it is to get a LinkedIn premium feature. For an individual, since the platform is now, uh, I mean, 
since I mean we are getting a lot of uh, organic reach through the LinkedIn post, mm -hmm. what you have mentioned already. So, is it really effective uh, to go for like a premium version for an individual, or it's better to use the non-premium? What's, well, what's your feedback? I really think it depends on on individual goals. Uh, I am okay. a LinkedIn coach and I don't have a LinkedIn premium at the moment because I just don't need it. Um, I'm okay. not saying that people shouldn't have it, but it depends on what they need. So, for instance, if right. let's say you are doing a lot of searches and you want to see who is uh, who has looked at your profile in the 90 days and you want to search for a lot of people, then LinkedIn premium, premium is for you. If you are applying for okay. a job... Uh, through LinkedIn, if you want to see some salary insights, if you want to get some more in-depth information about each job position, then LinkedIn okay. Premium is for me for you. So I think okay. uh, you really need to have a clear goal, uh, either to find a new job or find more potential leads, because uh, there is a specific amount of how many times you can uh, search for people on LinkedIn. Right? It kind of limits you. Um, yeah. And there's also only five people that you can see who viewed your last, uh, your profile the last. So if you want right. to have more access, you should get LinkedIn Premium. Right. If you want to have another job, maybe as well. But so. uh, Sefa, if someone is new, then uh, does he really need to start with Premium, or he can just explore and then probably get the Premium if needed? Yeah, did. yeah. I think you, you. I, I would agree with you. I think new people on the platform could just uh, explore and don't jump into premium right away. Uh, when they have okay. explored the platform and they finally got a grip of what it is, then maybe they can do the one month for free because each person has one month uh, for free of LinkedIn premium. So there's always a chance okay. to try it before really purchasing okay. it. Okay. So uh, I, I get this question, especially from a lot of people, especially who are in Asia and Malaysia. They asked me, okay, Norid, uh, I never been into LinkedIn or probably I have a LinkedIn account which I have opened last two years back, five years back. So if I'd like to start again, uh, where to start? Should I focus on creating content? Should I start focusing on like um, exploring others' content? So, so yeah. what should be the right answer for this? I mean, if you're completely new and starting out, I think it would be good to start with your profile. So just to make yeah. sure that your profile is shining and representing you in the best way possible and that it's clear for people what you're doing. Okay. That would be the first yeah. step. Then the next step would be to identify the industry leaders from your area. So let's say you're within yeah. marketing then you could okay. identify a few leaders, influencers on LinkedIn who are doing really good content and follow them. Okay. Um, that would be a great inspiration as well. And then once okay. you've got the grip of it, once you understood how the platform works and what type of content performs uh, better than the other, then I think it's time okay. to start engaging uh, with other creators, uh, start expanding your network and finally start creating your own content. But there's a related question. Like you said, uh, start um, growing your network, right? But if someone is new, no one actually yeah. gives a damn about the new yeah. person, right? So actually for a novice, uh, how can he grow his connection yeah. uh, and engagement? Like should he approach the other connections or he should focus on creating valuable content? What do you think from your experience? I think if possible to do both. At the same time, okay. because mm -hmm. uh, creating uh, when you're trying to expand your network and when you're inviting people, sometimes they check your activity. And if there cool. is nothing there, then maybe they will the acceptance rate is going to be lower. However, if uh, they check your profile and if they see that you're creating some content uh, around uh, the topic, they might be more willing to accept you. So I think it's it's good to do both. At okay. the same time, yeah. like, uh, because it will eventually help to get True. more connections. One is like getting attention and at the same time people can see what you're doing. Actually, I, I give the same kind of advice. I say like, when you're new, you should try to add 10 relevant people. So, mm -hmm. and also try to create at least two to three content per month, at least. 
So mm-hmm. then At you least, can yeah. grow your network. Yeah, yeah. You can grow your network and you can also, if people want to see who you are and, and why I should get connected with you, they have an answer. They're not like, I mean, just blindly adding with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yes, that comes back to also having a clear profile because if you have a not, don't really have an updated profile and invite people, they won't really understand what you're doing and maybe they will be more skeptical. Whereas if you have like All a right. clear, nice, neat profile, people will uh, add you more as well. Okay. So uh, let me ask you something. This is a very critical question for you, I think. <laughs> Okay. What do you think? Like LinkedIn, good for personal branding, or LinkedIn good for business growth, or both? It will be both. It will be both, okay. really. Uh, I don't think you can choose. Neither you should, because um, both for company, for people, they can brand themselves and and grow professionally with their own brand, and both also companies. And employees and employers can also brand themselves through their companies and grow right. the company. So it's both. It's both. Okay. Okay. One more thing. That's what I personally find so annoying. So I just want to know from you as you're one of the LinkedIn coach that, uh, I mean, I really don't uh, worry that to get connect with anyone. So if anyone send me requests, I usually accept. But the most annoying part that the moment I get connected with you the next thing you do you send me a message in my inbox and try to sell your product with the, without even uh, making any relationship or or trying to make me comfortable with you so i find it so annoying but at the same time i see a lot of people are doing it probably it works for some of them but as a linkedin coach uh, what is your feedback on it how how people should approach to the new connection Yes, definitely agree with you on this one that um, it shouldn't be uh, sales right away. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be like selling right away and, and telling about your product because people eventually like to create relationships and build them. And especially in Europe, no one likes that. No one likes a selling message right away. Um, and right. people like to get a message where you know you're asking them about their latest projects or what you're working on and then maybe take it from there and then when the when you are having this nice chat with the person then you can maybe mention something about the product you're selling or the services because say, sending that kind of message right away might mm. uh, make people just see it and don't reply at all yeah so you're exactly. you're gonna lose a potential client just because you were a bit you know direct and yeah that doesn't work most of the times. True. True. So we're almost at the end uh, of our conversation, but uh, before we wrap up, uh, I'd like to ask: Do you have any final tips, any final suggestion for our audience for about LinkedIn marketing or LinkedIn as a platform? I think that uh, my final tip would be that everyone who's on a platform, uh, except okay. you're just using it for fun, else everyone should okay. have a goal with what they're doing. So if you're creating content, what's your goal in the end? If you are um, building your company's profile on LinkedIn, what's the goal? And depending on the goal, then you can find yeah. a clearer path on what the content should be about. Um, right. And that's what I am also sometimes working with uh, some private clients when we are trying to define their personal brand and their content. We always think about okay. the goal. And if the goal is, right. let's say, have more speaking engagements within um, automation yeah. industry, then maybe you need to create yeah. more content around that. So, you know, okay. it's, it's a lot about that. That would be my advice to focus on the goal and then take it from yeah. there instead of, you know, Starting somewhere and don't Going really nowhere. have, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, lastly, what is the best way to contact you? I mean, if anyone have any questions or if they would like to get connect with you, is there any social media platform? Uh, I mean, you are comfortable to get connect with the audience? Yes, of course. So, if you would like to talk with me or ask me some kind of questions or so, 
you can always connect yeah. with me on LinkedIn and um, write me a private message on LinkedIn. But sometimes okay. my LinkedIn gets overwhelmed and uh, I'm also okay. active on Instagram. So on Instagram, okay. Katrina.Kurt and you can see a little bit more about my daily life and also I can okay. see your messages way faster. Okay, so uh, I can share your uh, social media profile link in our content as well, right? There, there shouldn't be no problem. Yes, no worries. Of course you can. Great. So thanks a lot, Katrina, uh, to be a part of Arm Social. I hope you really enjoyed the session. I did. And thank you again for having me on this show. I always love okay. talking about LinkedIn. And I, I hope that this uh, podcast episode is going to be valuable for all the listeners. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, guys, that, that is all from us. Hope you all have enjoyed this podcast session. Uh, really looking forward to reach you guys again with another exciting topic. But if you guys have any question or any queries, please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or inbox. And till the next episode, bye-bye. Have a nice time. Thank you.